Look around you. Look around you. Just look around you. <laughs> Have you discovered what it is you are looking for? That's right, hegemony. What is hegemony? Well, hegemony is many things. Hegemony is an extremely powerful force. It's possibly the strongest force that binds all things together. You cannot see it, or touch it, or even smell it. It's invisible. Simply put, hegemony is the process by which a dominant culture maintains its dominant position. Confused? Let me give some examples then. It is the inoculation of the populace in the ideals of the hegemonic group through <laughs> education, <laughs> entertainment, <laughs> religion, and news media. The suspect is an unidentified black male. The suspect is an unidentified black male. An unidentified black male. Unidentified black male. It appears that an unidentified black male. An unidentified black male. My, that was quite a bit of information, wasn't it? Now, would you like to know more about hegemony? Great. Let's take a closer look right now. Hegemony is a molecule made up of oxygen, hydrogen, and white male privilege. Can you find white male privilege on the periodic table? Ah, there it is, right between argon and krypton. It's one of the noble gases. Hello. Shall we try some experiments? Splendid! This is a man in a vacuum, devoid of white oppression. Let's see what happens when we introduce a single molecule of white male privilege. And now, let's continue to add white male privilege. My, it seems this man's chemical makeup has been irrevocably altered due to white male privilege. You might not realize it, but white male privilege is also a powerful force that can absorb or repel other particles based on their strength. For example, let's see what happens when a woman who has built up a strong resistance to hegemony enters the force field of a man super saturated with WMP. Conversely, watch the change in physical interaction when a woman less resistant to hegemony is sucked into his force field. Hopefully now you have an understanding of how hegemony works. You three still look perplexed. It might be useful to clear up some misunderstandings of hegemony. You. Yes, you. Follow me. You might have heard from your professors, or crazy radical scholars, that hegemony is a crippling, oppressive force. But in actuality, it can be quite useful in our everyday lives. You've probably never even thought about how helpful a little hegemony can be. More than likely, hegemony was hard at work the last time. You had to hail a cow. You tried to make friends at the last mixer.
the last time you thwarted a dangerous terrorist plot. <laughs> no! Or when you voted yes on Amendment 2 and successfully safeguarded the sacred union of heterosexual marriage. Ah, there. You get it. See how you benefit from hegemony? It's important not to take the usefulness of hegemony for granted. Now, suppose you wanted to reproduce hegemony at home, at school, or even someday when you get to the working world. But how does one go about reifying hegemonic power structures? You. Shh, yes. Come closer. Scientists and scholars have wrestled with this question for years! The formula is ever-changing, and the molecule has proved to be extremely adaptable, and may even mutate with changes in climate, technology, and geographic location. However, a few general trends have been observed in the way that hegemony continues to proliferate. Follow me. One way hegemony is perpetuated is through the use of institutions to formalize power. Nowhere is this more evident than through the power of mediated discourse. You may remember the rush you felt the first time you watched two females perform the acts of kissing and heavy petting for an audience of straight men. Where do you think these young women learned about appropriate displays of homosexuality for the white male gaze? It makes sense, doesn't it? The important thing to remember is that hegemony must be kept invisible in order to maintain its powerful force. It's important that we respect the caustic nature of hegemony and use caution when working with it. You're probably too young to remember some of these movements, but your parents may recall instances in history where certain groups of people tampered with hegemony and suffered dire consequences. As Sir Isaac Newton so wisely observed, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Oh dear, how dreadful. Better just to stay home and mind your P's and Q's, eh? Do you understand the benefits of hegemony now? Do you believe that you, on your own now, could reify hegemony discreetly? Excellent, then my work here is done. <laughs> Oh my, how long have you been standing there? Did you know there are those out there who seek to destroy hegemony? Who wish to see it wiped from the face of the earth? There, there. There are steps you can take to conserve hegemony and ensure that it is as potent for future generations as it is today. You. Follow me. One of the best ways we can conserve hegemony is to start them young. One easy and inexpensive way to ensure that hegemony is preserved for future generations is to replace racy propaganda, things that make them think too hard, with more enjoyable, less mind-numbing reading material. As children grow older, they may be exposed to the radical teachings of cultural warriors who wish to see hegemony exposed once and for all. You know what? No. These students have been introduced to writings that make them question the world around them. Imagine this class without Bell Hooks, Jill Dolan, or Richard Dyer. There. Isn't that much more peaceful? Now, do you all understand hegemony? I'm very glad to hear that. You can now all consider yourselves masters of hegemony. For those of you watching at home, hopefully you too have a better understanding of how hegemony impacts your lives. Love it or hate it, hegemony is here to stay. But don't take my word for it. Just look around you. <laughs>